Hello, Ken Spriggs here with a, uh, a short little video um, talking about a convention or a model contest and swap meet, as people have corrected me. I'm not sure what the difference between a convention is, but I've, I've usually just call these model conventions. But uh, it's called a uh, model contest and swap meet uh, at, uh, in Indianapolis or north of Indianapolis, Indiana. It's uh, the Roscoe Turner uh, IPMS uh, local chapter. They have theirs uh, every year, uh, either in March or in April. I've been to uh, the last, I believe just two. I've been to two of those. And I've been to the Chattanooga Nationals in Chattanooga, Tennessee in 2019. So uh, they were actually the only one that had a, um, I might have been to three of the ones in Indianapolis, I'm not quite sure, but Indianapolis is the only one that had a model convention near me in 2020. They had theirs in early, in early March, so it was right before everything had shut down. So they were the only one that I go to that was able to do it in 2020. So I've been there several times, and it's very close to me. It's only about an hour away uh, since I live in Indiana. And uh, I always have a good time there. It's a smaller convention, but quite a nice turnout. A lot of really cool models. Uh, primarily, the IPMS conventions have mostly military models, but they do have quite a few science fiction and fantasy and horror and things like that. So really nice showing this year. Uh, quite, a, quite a bit of good models there. Um, now, in the past, I've often gone home with, uh, with some awards uh, from those for some of my models. This year, I, I was not fortunate enough to get any awards, which is fine. There was a lot of really good competition. Uh, it's a little more difficult there because you are competing against people in your category. So, for example, I entered four models. Uh, my my uh, John Carpenter's a Thing and my ATST model were both in the diorama category. A lot of really good uh, dioramas in that category. Some very amazing stuff. So some really good competition. Um, my charge bust I had under the busts, and the um, my astronaut from 2001 I had in the figures. So each of those could only really compete and win an award in that category, and they were competing against other models in that category. So so sometimes that affects your ability to win if you had some really good showing, which. This, uh, this model show definitely did, but I had a great time, saw some really great models, uh, talked to several people, which was really cool to do. Uh, and I always like going to their, their vendor, or they call it the swap meet, and picked up some really great items for my current builds. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look, uh, first of all, at my entries that I entered into the contest. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the different models that were there. I try to, I'll try to keep them in categories of each of them. I'm not going to announce each of the categories, but I'll just kind of show them. Now, I will tell you that I, I took more pictures and was more interested in the things that are the genres that I like. The science fiction, uh, the figures, the horror, the, um, the fantasy, that kind of thing. I did take some pictures of some of the really cool military ones. Uh, and some overall pictures of the whole room and that kind of thing. So, but uh, it's some very good models, you know, and again, no, uh, some amazing, amazing things by a lot of these modelers. They're just not necessarily the, the genre that I'm interested in per se, but, but I've seen some fantastic things there as well for those, uh, for those different areas. So, all right, let's go ahead and take a look.
All right, so some really good models there. Really great show. Saw a lot of really cool things. So uh, just to kind of give you an idea, obviously you saw there were quite a few really, really nice dioramas. Uh, I'm not certain, but I think that they combine some categories. Usually they have a ton of categories at an IPMS convention. Uh, for example, they might have dioramas, but they might have specifically science fiction, specifically horror, specifically military, that kind of thing. I'm not sure, but they might have done some combining of some of those. It seemed like there were less, but I'm not quite certain. I'll have to take a look at that, but a lot of good competition there. Uh, but to kind of give you an idea, so uh, one of the ones I entered was my my charge bust from Filmies Girls, and I think I did a good job on it, but someone else entered the exact same bust and they did a phenomenal job. They even have a tattoo, a really cool looking tattoo on her back which looks amazing. So uh, it's hard to compete. And I do believe that that, well, I'm certain that one won an award. So definitely that's what it comes down to. If you have somebody else that's doing the same thing you are, or even some other type of, of uh, subject matter, and they do a, a phenomenal job, then then they get the award and it's well-deserved. So, uh, you know, no, uh, no uh, bad feelings on my part at all. They definitely deserved it and it was well deserved. So let me go ahead and show that one again real quick uh, just to kind of show you how, how well that they had done a job on that one. All right, and then one of my favorite things that I love to do at any of these um, conventions or swap meets is to uh, check out the vendor areas. Oftentimes I'll buy model kits or modeling supplies or different things that are there and available to me. So um, again, this year was no exception and I found some really, really good stuff that are gonna help me with my current builds. So let's go ahead and take a look at those things that I, that I scored. All right, and here's one of the favorite parts um, of the convention for me uh, that I uh, ended up finding some items that are really gonna help me out on my current builds. So uh, it's always a good a good thing with the vendors to be able to find some cool items. Sometimes it's, it's model kits that I wanna build. Sometimes it's materials that I need to help me build. Uh, in this particular case, I found some items that are gonna to work to help me augment some existing models that I'm working on. So uh, we'll start with this one right here. So I've got this um, Vallejo Model Air paint set. It's for uh, World War II Allied. It's only $20 and you get 16 bottles, which is really nice. And uh, the Model Air is a thinner version so that you can, um, you can airbrush it instead of painting with a brush. But the main reason I wanted it was that it has a lot of shades of gray. You got your dark gray, sea gray, neutral gray, cement gray, gray. You got some dark earth. Uh, I believe that's flat brown. Hall red, which I really like and use a lot. A lot of greens, which I also use a lot of shadings in for dioramas as well. And you got some sand up there at the top left. But uh, I'm going to be working on doing something with my base for the lunar surface, which I'll go over in the future uh, for my Aries 1B. And I'm gonna be using some grays. So obviously all these will come in, come in nicely handy for that. Uh, and that was a good deal to get these for $20. So it's a really good product. I got these two model kits and I had to really scour around. Now the nice thing about an IPMS conve IP MS convention is that it's mostly military. Most of the vendors are selling military models because that's the biggest draw there. Military is very popular. Uh, and so obviously they're selling a lot of military models that are there. Now, uh, to get some figures for my Ares 1B, I needed something in a 148 scale, which is, is available, just very tricky to find. Uh, far more popular scale was 135, I've discovered. And 172 is pretty popular, which are really tiny. Uh, but 
there are certainly 148, but they're just not as readily available in order to try to adapt. So I got these two kits and I got a great deal. I got them for $5 each. And uh, this one I got because it has two seated pilots. And I'll show these later when I when I work with them for the actual model. And again, these are for the Ares 1B because it's a 148 scale kit. It does not have any figures, but I want to put figures inside. I want to put two pilots in it for the cockpit. I want to have a Haywood Floyd figure. And then from Shapeways, I already have ordered uh, three stewardess figures that I'll be using two of in the build as well. So, so I found this, which is pretty cool. And then this one even more so, which I really like. It has quite a few figures that are also 148 scale. This one's by Hasegawa. This is monogram, of course. And, um, and I can adapt it. And the nice thing about this one is they most of them have separate arms and sometimes separate bottom and top torso. Uh, so you can you can work with it, and I can use pieces from one for the other and to get the right kind of look that I want. So we'll go over that a little bit. <clears throat> then I found um, from Squadron this uh, little canopy set, vacuum formed. And what I'm going to be doing is, I haven't shown it yet, but I'll be showing it pretty soon. Uh, this is a canopy from a, another model that I'm going to be building here soon. And uh, this is 3D printed, of course but I want it to be in clear. So I was going to vacuum form my own since I have that ability and I've done that before, but I found these, so they look very close to the profile, a little bit different in the back where it gets a little more solid, but I can adapt it. It doesn't have to be perfectly that, it just has to fit over the opening of the cockpit. So, so a little bit more on that in the future. But, uh, but that was a nice little find. That was only a dollar, which is quite nice. And then the last thing here, let me take this off. Hold on one second. All right, the last thing I got is this sheet. And it's called Ready Grass. And it's a, this is kind of a, a thin, very thin styrene plastic backing. And it's 12 and a half inches by 14 and seven eighths. But what it's mainly for is you make a project out of it and it looks supposed to look like grass. And I guess apparently you can mold it if you heat it over a surface. You can cut it of course with scissors. Uh, now the thing I like about it is that it's very even consistency, it's very smooth. It's almost like a sandpaper, but what I'm gonna use it for or try to use it for is to put this on the floor of the passenger compartment in the Ares 1B to imitate carpeting. I've seen a couple of other options or a couple of other techniques used by Lou Del Masso, uh, another modeler, which I'm, I'm not sure I'll get his name and I'll, I'll talk about him in the, in my video when I show this, but this is pretty cool because I can paint it to make it look uh, probably a rubber black or a black for the floor of it. But if I can come up with a method for cutting it out to fit onto the floor, the only issue is those little raised platforms that the seats fit on that I have to cut around in order to put it in place. And because it is backed by a styrene plastic, I should be able to glue it down fairly easily to the plastic and uh, secure it on there. So, so I wanna get in play with that and see if that works out well for that. Uh, two things, one, it'll give me a carpeted look, but also it'll cover up the two really major seams on either side where the two halves of that floor join together. So, all right, so quite a nice haul. Uh, always come away from the conventions with some nice things from the vendors. And so that's definitely a highlight um, of those, those events for me. All right, so uh, all around a really good time. I really love going to uh, the various uh, model contests or conventions. Uh, and I really love seeing the work of other modelers and talking to them about my own work. And oftentimes I've struck up uh, friendships and met people and, and uh, kept in touch with them and that kind of thing. So uh, definitely looking forward to the next one, which is Wonderfest coming up in early June. So I will be working very, very uh, well. I am working very intensely to complete uh, the projects that I am taking there. So stay tuned and uh, 
and we'll be showing those off here even more in the future. Thank you.